Hello beautifuls, this is Romy here and welcome to Asagawa Academy. I hope I'm saying it correctly. But I found this game through the Echio website through the free game section and I thought I should give it a try. So as I was like downloading it and stuff, reading about the game, I realized that the guys you actually get to pursue are actually real people. They're actually, uh, I'm saying the word actually a whole lot, <laughs> sorry. They are they are real people from YouTube, and I don't know much about the normal boot club, or I hope that's what they're called. I don't know much about them, so I'm very sorry for the ones that do know about them. I don't know about them at all, so I'm just playing this completely blind, so I don't know who is who and what their personality is. I did check out their channels, and they seem generally like good guys. So let's actually start into the game. We are here playing as Hannah as Chapter 1. Uh, I don't really, I, I feel like I'm going to be very slow in this game. The train made its way along the gentle curve of the coast of Japan, what's going to be farther and farther from home. Across from me sat a boy, face half buried in a newspaper. He was, uh, he was deeply entranced in whatever article he was reading and hadn't spoken a, word, a single word to me, even when I asked if I could join him in the last compartment with any available space. He shrugged, nodded, and adjusted his newspaper without ever making eye contact. It's been almost an hour, in fact, and he hadn't once looked at me. Devoid of conversation, I took instead of to count the <laughs> to counting the buttons on the pretent pretentiously lush car car carmine 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 seat cushions. One, two, three, twenty-one, twenty-two, and so forth, over and over. Now and again, I turned to look out the window where the trees are blurring by. Sometimes a smeared green would break and reveal the quiet blue of the sea of Japan. Eventually, this rapidity, r rapidity, sorry, <laughs> made my stomach churn. I once I went back to the to counting but the buttons on the seat cushions. Honestly, I cannot read for some reason today. I need to open my water bottle. So, gotta get prepared. Throat's gonna be hurting. <laughs> The train compartment shuddered around us. My eyes wandered to the boy in his jacket. It wasn't the school-issued blue that I and the other students on a train were wearing. Instead, it was a green varsity-like jacket with an embroidered patch poorly sewn on the front. Hmm. So, you're a first here, right? Oh, oh, then. Sorry, not right. He folded his newspaper neatly, set it in his lap, and looked at me with a half-interested gaze. I believe this is Jared? Right? I think this is Jared, the one that's super into himself, but he's genuinely nice. I do like the sparkly effects. That's kind of cute. I like that. Did he just catch me staring? Now that the paper was gone, I saw his face. He watched me through heavy-lidded eyes. His hair was Im immaculate, immaculately sorry, groomed his teeth straight and blindingly bright. There was something about him, the way the light hit him, that made him look like he was almost charming-like. Oh, it's sparkling. <laughs> um, me? <laughs> he glanced around the compartment empty besides us and laughed. Oh, uh, no, I'm not a fresh year. I'm a third year. So we're a junior? The train began to slow, metal wheels groaning against the metal tracks. The sudden shifts threatened to rob me of whatever was left in my stomach, but I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, willing myself to keep it together. What kind of impression would I leave? Who can go to it before I even arrive at the academy? I would leave the worst impression. The boy frowned and picked up at I picked at the hem of my cotton skirt. Mm. That's not possible. I've never seen you before. It took me a moment of mouth fishing to find a response. Mm. I uh it's it's complicated, okay? I'm a total introvert and I don't want to be around crowds. It's because I'm a transfer student? Can't you tell my pink hair? Uh, but, but the thing is, if she had pink hair, I would assume a lot of people would like, see her. Since it's not the normal, norm color of her hair. He laughed again. A transfer student, huh? We don't get many of those. I removed my acceptance letter from the front pocket of my uniform. The paper heavy weight off white had accumulated creases for my reading and rereading, as if the words might have changed since the last time I read it. It's okay, I do that too. Cause, you know, sometimes things are too good to be true. 
The boy took it, studied it, then handed it back to me. I'll see you around. Well then, Hannah, I suppose I'll be seeing you around. There is small voice acting here and there, but I, I'm going to continue reading it. <laughs> he smiled at me as he picked up the suitcase lying next to him. By the time I hiccuped a response, he was already gone from the compartment. I stared out into the empty hallway of the train. It was then that I realized he, have, having gotten it for my acceptance letter, knew my name and never got his. The train settled at the station and filed out with the rest of the uniformed students. It was early April and the last frost of winter had gone and come had come and gone. The trees were already green, their leaves shivering and the occasional gusts weaving through them. The air was mild, only a few cli clouds clouds <laughs> hanging in the sky. I walked along the road with a swarm of blue jacket bodies, looking at the little gulp groups. Sorry, I wanted gulp water <laughs> groups breaking off from the crowd. Everyone was buzzing so animatedly around me. I held my suitcase tight in my sweaty hands. It was a leather brown, leather brown and worth more than anything it contained. It wasn't far to the schools. It wasn't far to the school when I was. What? For maybe the first time at what? Thankful that I thankful that what I owned didn't amount to much. Alright, I don't understand. My school issued black Oxfords. Click 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 down the pavement. I walked this walk over and over in my mind, so many nights I lay awake, imagining what it would be like to walk from the train station to Asago Academy this first time. My new start. I always imagined that everything would change for me on this walk, that somehow everything would be magically different. But as I looked around, I realized nothing had changed. That's kind of depressing. I hadn't changed. By the time I reached the massive gate to the academy, I forgot all about the disappointment slouching in the back of my throat. The school, framed by the gate's twisted black metal, was just as beautiful as the glossy photos I saw in its pamphlets. This was it. A Sagao Academy. I glanced around. The warm swarm of students gathered around the gate. Beyond it, tiny blue people bounced around the academy's main building. A girl pressed a button to one side of the gate. The excitement in the air was almost palpable. A few moments later, the black gate, with great effort, creaked out words and cleared the pathway. As the rest of the group shifted into motion, I followed along, a sheep in the herd. My stomach tied itself into knots. The crowd split off into different directions. For a moment, I panicked. A tired-looking man with graying, graying hair called out for first year as a cluster of fresh-faced students were gathered around him. Hey, hey, look at that girl! I turned. A few feet away, a small group of boys were pointing at me and snickering. Pink hair? Are you kidding me? How desperate can you get? Hot shame crawled down my neck. Excuse me, what's wrong with pink hair? My goals is to get like a blonde ombre of pink. Like it, it's blonde on top and then all the way down it's pink. So I'm probably gonna get judged by so many parents and everything. But you know what? Who cares? Cause I will feel happy. Cause it's my goal to have that ever since I was little for some weird reason. I attached myself to a group of girls, following a few steps behind them. In the distance, cicadas, I, I thought they said cicadas or something. Cicadas hummed in time to my shoes, crunching against gravel. My hair. It wasn't my fault that my hair looked like this. Luckily, I found myself at the girls' dormitory, a large sign in the lawn, reading Primrose, Prim, Primrose House. I wanted to say princess. <laughs> the building dwarfed me in size and sheer intimidation. How many students did a saga have? As I approached the building, a red-headed girl lingering nearby caught my attention. I looked away, then looked back. She was staring at me. She walked over. Oh, you must be my roommate! I eyed her warily. She was smiling and bouncing in a way that suggested her views on life were akin to a perpetual bouncy castle. What? Me? Bingo. Of course, you silly. Let me guess. Room 325? I thought back to the paper I received a month prior with the list of all the supplies I needed for the year and my dorm arrangements. Uh... Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she laughed, but I couldn't figure out what was so funny. Was she laughing at me? When I found out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew you were going to be a total main character. <laughs> I'm sorry. A what? Mm -hmm. When I saw you outside the gate, I knew it was you. I mean, look at you. <laughs> look at that hair. I felt a lump forming in my throat. What was she talking about? 
Chad's been making fun of me. I hadn't spent more than five minutes on campus, and I was already being monked. Are we gonna learn why we have pink hair, or...? My hands began to tremble. Is... Is there something wrong? With my hair? Oh my gosh, she's about to cry. Her face slackened from its amused smile to a more worried expression. Then she began to laugh again. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's great, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> We're getting off on the wrong foot, aren't we? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm Mai Sasaki. You must be Hana. Mai? Okay. I bowed my head. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Mai. All your school books are waiting in our room and your welcome letter, and I read the envelope. I hope you're not mad. Excuse me? That is a... You are stepping on privateness? Or, you know, what? Well, yeah, that's private stuff. You shouldn't be touching that stuff. Mine started walking towards the dorm's front doors. I followed behind like a lost puppy. Did you check in at the front desk already? No, I didn't. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> Good, they'll offer to have a staff member give you a tour of the campus. But I can show you around. We don't get many transfer students in year three, you know. <gasps> oh, is that your only bag? Just the one. I'm glad I brought an extra bag of stuff to decorate a room with. I started already. I hope you don't mind. But I did wait to string the lights. I thought we could do it together, you know. She spoke quickly. The words bubbling from her mouth and left me no time to answer until the end of her monologue. Yeah, okay. That sounds good. She held the front door open for me and I hurried inside. Ooh, so much pink, it's so beautiful. This is what I want my room to look like one day. Yep. Girls <laughs> followed up and down the hallway, howling greetings and exchanging vague necessities that were more often than not, how was your break? And look at how tan you got. It seems like everyone knew each other. I followed Maya as she led me through the maze of students and up to two flights of stairs. Each dorm floor looked the same at la as the last narrow, as the last narrow white doors lining both sides of the pale pink walls. Then gold numbers were tacked to the front of each. The numbers rising as we climbed. You're not missing anything with the campus tour, I promise. Mr. Saitomo does them every year, and he's like totally dull. He just drags you around the entire campus and talks in that weird, squeaky voice of his. I'll tell you everything you need to know. I smile, trying to let this calm my nerves. Thanks. We headed down the hallway on the third floor. Mine stopped up, stopped us in front of a door number 325. Here we are. Oh, it's so... I like the string lights. I wish we could have it over here too. Huh. <laughs> a faint smell of potpourri. Potpourri wafted through the room. The I hope I'm saying potpourri. Pot you know what? The walls like the hallway were soft, powdery pink. My already faced them with a tapestry of posters, magazine, cutouts, and photographies. F photographs, sorry. Oh my gosh, look at that guy with the tape. <laughs> Some of the photos were of cats, but most were of male models and rugged musicians. A bunk bed, two writing, two writing desks with wooden chairs, a small dresser, and a mirrored vanity, all clearly provided by the school, were the only pieces of furniture in the tiny room. The top bunk was covered in neatly tucked blankets and threw pillows of clashing patterns and colors. The bottom bunk has a single stiff-looking pillow and a thin cotton blanket that, did, I, that I didn't need to touch to know was horribly itchy. I must have grimaced because Mai quickly smiled at me. I brought way too many pillows and blankets. I always overpack. I went to Italy over the break and Mom got me got really mad at me because I bought I brought five bags but we were only there for a week. <laughs> she laughed, pulled a, pulled several blankets and pillows from her bunk and rearranged them neatly on mine. A sudden twinge of guilt and embarrassment hit me. Perfection. There, that's much better. <laughs> Thanks, Mine. I placed my suitcase on the bottom bunk and began to unpack its contents. Several changes of clothing, pens and pencils, empty notebooks, a few photographs of my father, a dilapidated stuffed rabbit, an old portable radio, and a small black box. Oh, so that's why she... So, yeah, because I was like, this room doesn't look entirely girly, so it's us that didn't make it super girly. My opened the curtains and the sunlight poured in. So, where are you from? I slid the now empty suitcase under the bottom bunk. Uh, About two hours north of here, it's a small town called Amari. Amari Risu? 
You probably haven't heard of it. I set the stuffed rabbit, Mr. Bunny, on my bed beside a purple and teal throw pillow. Oh! Did you go to a different boarding school, or...? No, I went to a public school down the street from my house. <gasps> public really? school? What was that like? Were the students mean? Did you have a lot of friends? I always went to private schools. My parents worked a lot. And my dad goes overseas, so I think they stuck me here for convenience. I feel like I have to talk fast for her, because she seems like a fast talker. <laughs> oh, hey, what's that? I'd removed an ordinarily patterned origami crane from the black box and was setting it on the unclaimed writing desk. <laughs> oh, this? My mother made it for me a long time ago. I set it beside a stack of thick textbooks, which I assumed were provided for me. Wow, it's so pretty. I've never seen paper like that before. <gasps> oh yeah, the lights. Let me get them. Mai went to her own desk, opened the drawer, and pulled out a long tangled string of fairy lights. I thought these would be nice. Here, help me string them up. She grabbed a container of push pins and pulled her wooden desk chair out and over to one wall. I did the same with my own. Together we pinned the lights around the perimeter of the room. Oh, are we going to see it now? How was the train ride over? Did you meet anyone? No, not really. I was in a compartment with some guy and... What? Some guy, huh? Was he cute? Mm. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't even get his name. Mm. Mine seemed disappointed for a moment, then perked back up. You'll have to point him out to me if you see him again. Uh, okay. Once we finished stringing the lights, Mai climbed down from her chair and brushed her hands together triumphantly. Yeah! Done! <laughs> okay, now it's time for lunch. The food here is pretty good. There's this ramen place down the street from ca the campus that's like out of this world. But the school only lets us leave campus on weekends. My walk to the window. We could go today because it's Sunday and it's pretty nice out. But I guess you might want to go eat. Go to the calf. The cafeteria, I guess. Since she just got here, we could. <laughs> she was suddenly interrupted by her own enthusiastic laughter. Oh my gosh, Mimi Santo Santos totally just tripped outside and fell on her face. I saw it. Um. Oh, is that mean to laugh? Maybe I shouldn't have. Oh well, anyways, let's go eat. I'm totally starved. She led me out of the room before I even had the chance to respond. The cafeteria was buzzing with students excited for the new year. I would have chose a ramen shop, honestly. Because we're going to be here... At, at the calf for like a whole like five days out of the two weekends. The only people as nervous looking as I felt were the tables of skittish white-eyed first years. I stepped into the line behind Mai, taking an empty plastic tray, which shuffled through asking for helpings from the sulky cafeteria workers when we passed something that looked good. With full trays, Mai led me straight to a table in the back where a few students were already sitting. Mai sat down and I took a seat across from her. Hi, Mai. How was your break? It was good. I went to Italy and Spain. Dad fell off a jet, a ski jet and broke his ankle. Uh-huh. It's better now, though. Oh. Well, that's nice. I expected to be introduced, but the girl turned back to her group of friends, and Mai turned back to me. She began to assault her food with a fork and tell me in practically minute-by-minute minute account about her fleeting romance last summer with a boy she met on the beach that didn't go further than a few salty kisses. I sat back and let my talk. For the first time since arriving on campus, I felt like I was finally able to breathe. I picked up, picked up my Brussels sprout and studied my as she spoke. The more she talked, the more I began to notice small details about her. She had a high songbird voice. What? She was dynamic, her face twisting this way and that into exaggerated expressions as she spoke. <laughs> she laughed often. She Im imitated people in wildly unflattering voices, seemingly unrelated to her actual opinion of them. But most notably, she talked. A lot. <laughs> I didn't find this particularly annoying, as it filled the silence and she had hardly ever asked questions that required my full attention. Just as Mai was rounding off a shockingly detailed account of the time she accidentally walked in on her friend's older brother in the act of changing, a flash of a familiar green eye green caught my eye. I glanced over. <gasps> hey, that's him. Huh? Who? I leaned across the table to whisper just in case he could hear me through the ambient chatter of the lunchroom. The boy from the train. That's him. What? Jared? Um, yeah, with the weird green jacket and swoopy hair. <laughs> he just picked up his tray and was walking past us when something seemed to catch his eye. 
Hmm? Oh, you. I looked up at him, suddenly realizing he was talking to me. Why are you sparkly? I Can I have your sparkles? But this is where we are going to stop. Right here. Sparkly Jared. I don't know much about Jared, but I'm assuming we're going to learn about him through this game. Um, I do find it quite interesting that we're pursuing YouTubers. Uh... I'm, I'm assuming they're okay with that. <laughs> they're pleasing their fangirls through this game. But this game is quite interesting so far. I mean, the storyline's going pretty pretty good. I'm not bored. And then the character developments are pretty nice. The art style is super adorable. And it's different from what, what I'm used to personally. So I do enjoy it. And I hope you guys are going to enjoy it as well. Um, for those that already played this game, please no spoilers. I don't want spoilers. I don't even know what route I'm going to be landing in since there's so many routes and so many guys to pursue. But I'm not even going to tell you guys what guy I find interesting so far. Based on looks. I don't know him personally or know what he's like. But based on looks and how he appears to look. Yeah, just the first impression type of thing. I want to pursue this guy. So thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful. And I will see you guys in the next one.